Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, or in this case this evening, I'm going to do the final update or part 8 to this crazy story that began a few weeks ago, which was titled, Wife Manipulated Husband to Open Relationship and He Manipulated Her into the Ultimate Divorce. And where things left off in the previous part a couple hours ago, that's where he told his wife Ada, that is it, get out. We are done, and maybe, just maybe, after we divorce, maybe we can think about reconciling or something like that, which is a bunch of crap. And as you all recall, she didn't take that too well. Left in a huff, pretty pissed off about the whole thing. And of course, as you recall in part seven, he heard a lot more about what she was doing behind the scenes when she was with her husband. A lot more cheating than he, she let on, blah, blah, blah. And now we're going to wrap things up. And this will be longer than part seven, as you can clearly see, but definitely worth your time staying up for this final update. So, he continues, he says here, uh, When Kathy got home that night, I told her Ada was leaving by next Tuesday. Kathy said my decision was no great surprise. I wondered if Kathy would be surprised by my decision about her. That talk would have to wait until Ada was gone. Friday after work, Ada, Kathy, and I were together again for the first time since my talk with Ada. Ada and I were in the kitchen when Kathy arrived home. She joined us. Ada told her we were divorcing because Kathy wouldn't get out of the way. Uh, no, we're divorcing because of your actions. If she just left us alone, we could have worked things out. You mean she could have manipulated her husband better? Kathy says she was sorry that things hadn't worked out the way Ada wanted to. But Kathy didn't destroy our marriage. She didn't have a long-term affair with Roger and then invite him over for SEX. That was Ada. Well, good for Kathy for saying that. Ada was really angry now. She got in Kathy's face, put her hands on her hips, and shouted at Kathy, Why can't you leave us alone? We could solve our problems if you weren't in the way. You just want Jerry for yourself. You're wrecking our marriage. Try to get rid of me so you can replace me. Jerry's my husband, not yours. Get out. Uh, nothing like a good cat fight. <clears throat> Kathy moved forward so Ada and Kathy's faces were a few inches apart and, and said to Ada, You've done horrible things. You've hurt people. People just don't forgive and forget. Admit your behavior and let Jerry decide what's best for him. I'm not in the way. Your lies and manipulation are in the way. You can't have an honest relationship with Jerry unless you start being honest with him. Ada looked stunned, glanced at me, and glared back at Kathy. Ada backed off. She couldn't risk continuing this. Who knows what Kathy would say about her continuing lies and manipulation. Ada just said if she and I had been left alone, that we could have worked past our problems. In your dreams, sweetheart. I said that Kathy had nothing to do with my decision. Ada and I could not just not be together now. Maybe someday, but I could even consider re reconciliation now. Kathy looked at me like I was crazy when I said maybe someday. The rest of the evening was tense, but we got through it. Remember, this is bullshit, guys. He's just saying this to get her the fuck out. Keep that in mind. Uh, Ada was gone much of the day of the day Saturday and came home in a better mood. She didn't say where she'd been. I didn't care, but hoped she was making arrangements to leave. Last Tuesday was the 45th day. I stayed in for work to help Ada leave and to make sure she left. After Kathy left for work, Ada asked if we could talk again. Was she wearing another short skirt this time? Or was she showing up in lingerie to get you to change your mind? Okay, she wanted me to, to wanted me to reconsider and let her stay. She loved me and said she'd do anything to work out her problems. I asked her why she wanted to stay with me and stay married. She obviously wanted to be with other men and knew that was impossible if we stayed together. Unless she continued sneaking around. Why not just divorce and be single? She, she could sleep with whoever she wanted to openly and not have to worry about me. Because she wanted a husband. She wanted that ring on her finger. Be a Mrs. Somebody. She wanted to have the guaranteed paycheck. And she likes sneaking around. She likes sneaking around. And the adventure and the excitement, that's what gets her off. She said that I was her Prince Charming. She loved me and wanted to be with me. Only me. She knew how I was the only man for her. Roger was a one-time aberration and she'd never cheat on me again. And right now, dudes across the world are laughing as they probably heard the same bullshit at least once from a cheater. She said she didn't want other men. She just wanted me. I told that she's still not being honest with me. How could we even have a relationship if she wasn't honest with me? Ada looked offended that I didn't believe her. She said she was being honest with me. She told me everything, but if I had any questions, that she would answer honestly. I asked why she didn't tell me about her affair with Andy. She told me there was no affair. They just kissed one time and they were drunk. Oh, well. 
That solves everything. That was it. She already told me about that. I told her I knew she had a full-blown affair with Andy, not just a kiss, and that it lasted two months. I've heard the expression, the color just drained from her face, but I've never actually seen that before. Now I've seen it. The color actually left Ada's face when her neck turned red. Ada is pale normally, but now her face was paper white. Even her freckles lost some color. She said that it wasn't true. She only had the affair with Roger, no one else. Yeah, but the color of your skin is telling me everything I need to know. This girl's a fucking chameleon. I asked her if she still kept in touch with, the, with her beautiful boy Jonah, the one with the big you-know-what who got away. That affair lasted almost two years. Ada knew there was no way I'd know about anyone named Jonah unless I knew about her cheating on me with him. Ada broke down and started sobbing. Hobag Handbook, Chapter 2. <clears throat> I asked Ada if the friends of her cop lover also effed her in the backseat of the car. It wouldn't be the first time Ada hooked up with it multiple guys in one night. Ada was uh, howling now. She could no longer deny her serial cheating. I knew too many details. She got down on her knees. <laughs> oh, that's pretty normal for her. <laughs> got down on her knees, putting her arms around my legs, and said, I'm so sorry. And I didn't make this up. This is what he said she said. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to despise me even more. <laughs> I don't think there's any other way he could despise her more unless, I don't know, she was harming animals or, or I don't know what. I'm not going to cheat ever again. You are my guy. I only want you. I know that now. That was in the past. I don't want anybody else. I love you. I realize how stupid I've been. I will never. It will never happen again. I'm sorry. Please let me stay and work to repair our marriage. I'm begging you. She was really wailing now. Tell me your cameras were recording this. I told her to get up, and she didn't. Just tightened a hold on my legs. I told I told her uh, her <coughs> excuse me. I told her the lying, cheating, manipulation was something I just can't overlook and forgive. Especially since she's still manipulative and lying to me. She made it impossible for me to be with her now. If she actually changed, God help, and I believe she was going to be faithful to me, I would consider getting back together. But only after the divorce. We needed a divorce to finish with the past. We could figure out what happens next, but only after the divorce. And, and if history represents it, and if history represents it behind us. Ada continued to hold on to me and sobbing and said, Please, please don't do this. Please let me stay. I realize I don't need any other men. I love you. I took her arms and lifted her off the floor and said, We can't be together now. Good fucking Lord. Talk about meltdown. This went on for a while. Ada finally realized that there was no convincing me to let her stay. So the waterworks stopped and she just asked if Kathy had told me about Andy and Jonah and her cop. I told her that Kathy didn't tell me anything. She asked if Kathy didn't, didn't tell me, how did I know? And I didn't say anything. She asked if I'd been recording her conversations. I didn't reply to that. Just told her it was time for her to leave. I wanted Ada to believe that I was recording everything. Let her worry about what I'm going to do with her confessions. She knew that she couldn't convince me to change my mind, so she went to finish packing and loading up her car. I helped her to speed things up. She was supposed to sell the car and give me half the sale and return the engagement ring to me. That can wait until after the divorce. Uh, I didn't want to fight over that right now. I wanted her gone. Yes, get her the fuck out of there. Say so whatever you gotta say, get her out of there. And then, you know, you can... The next stage of your plan. She finished packing her car. I asked her where she'd be staying, and she said she rented a two-bedroom furnished apartment last Saturday. How's she going to pay for that? The landlord says she can move in today. She said it will be okay until she moved back in with me. I asked her for the address. I guess she thought I wanted her address. I could come by and see her, but I wanted my lawyer to have it. She gave me the address. Ada also said she's going back to work for Andy. Of course. She talked to Andy last Friday, and he was willing to give her old job back. Andy told her he understood the situation that Ada was in when she quit and figured she'd be back sooner or later. Please. Andy's getting some special favors from Ada to get her job back. I wonder what she had to do to get her job back. I think we all know. Did she offer to renew her past affair with Andy? Maybe she just told Andy she was considering reporting their affair to HR or his wife. Or all the above. 
Anyway, she's back working with Andy and Kathy. Well, you know what? It's actually not a bad thing because that way then the judge and it's going to come down to the judge one day, I bet you, can see she has gainful employment and benefits and she can take care of herself. You get the point. I actually see this as a win. <clears throat> what a relief. She finally left. I think I missed a part here. Ah, here we go. Did she offer to renew her pass with Andy? Blah, 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 or the above. Anyway, she's back working with Andy and Kathy. I wished her good luck, and she told me she wouldn't let our relationship die. She'd fight to get me back. She wouldn't be seeing any other men. Is she going to become a nun? She asked if she, could, she and I could do date nights to talk about things and to get to know each other again. I told her, let's play by ear. Before anything else, we need to get the divorce behind us, and she finally left. Thank God. Tell her anything. Get the fuck out of here. He said, what a relief. Much less drama than I expected. Maybe Ada, made a, Ada bought the stuff about getting back together after the divorce was final. I just have to keep my hopes, her hopes up through the divorce. I didn't have a problem with her going back to work. She has to support herself. As long as the divorce goes through as is on time, I don't care what she does. Yeah, as funny as it was, she quit her job and all that. You want her to be have a job and have employment and have a paycheck and benefits when you're divorcing. Because you don't need the fact that, well, my husband has a job, but I don't have a job. And that type of thing playing out. Kathy came home around her normal time. I told her that Ada was gone for good and asked her to sit down to talk. I told her that Ada would be, would be working with her again starting tomorrow. Kathy said she knew. Andy told her this morning. And she was fine with that. They were better as a team than Kathy working on her own at this point. She could still learn a lot from Ada. I told Kathy to watch her back. And Kathy said with Ada. And I said always. I asked her uh, how he knew where, where the bar was. Did Kathy ask to meet her? Uh, she said that when they were living together, he followed her from work to the bar and would spy on her from the street. And she's thinking about getting back with this guy. Then again, he probably had reason to suspect her because I don't trust Kathy. None of you guys trust Kathy. He knew she was going drinking with co-workers and wanted to see if she got too friendly with anyone. He was always suspicious and jealous. Now he shows up hoping to see her. He knows that the only way he can spend time with her is through that. I told Kathy that Ada said that Kathy left her ex because he was pressuring Kathy to get married. Kathy said they never seriously discussed marriage. He was jealous and always finding fault with her. During an argument, he told her to get out and they were done. She agreed, and they were done and left. Uh, that, Ka that Kathy's ex was pressuring her to marry was another of Ada's lies. It did want me to think I had a future with Kathy. I asked why she didn't tell her ex about me, her and me. She said that her ex and, and her weren't together, and it wasn't his business what she was doing. If she decided to go back with him, I would become his business, and she'd tell, tell him. She'd uh, see if he'd really changed or if he went ballistic at the news. Kathy says she knew I'd ask her about her ex when Ada brought him up right before Ada confessed about Jonah. She knew I was recording stuff. It was a smart thing to do. There you go. Kathy knew all along or, or had good reason to suspect this guy was recording. Either she knew, or shall I say strongly suspected, or she, say, she suspected it and saying this to see if he confesses. Kathy is not dumb. And I've been saying all along, get rid of Kathy as soon as possible. Uh-uh, don't be with her. She knew I was recording stuff. It was a smart thing to do. She asked if I'd been recording in our bedroom. I laughed and told her no, but that was a great idea. I said I wished I would have thought of that a month ago. She told me if I had, I'd had any recordings of us in the bedroom. She wanted copies. I told her I'd give her the link to the PORN site uh, that I'm sending them to. She said I better and giggled. Obviously, it wasn't recording in the bedroom. I asked her why she thought I was recording, and she told me I said something to her I couldn't, I couldn't have known about unless I was listening to their conversations. It was a minor thing, something about what she wanted us to do on an upcoming Saturday. A sort of surprise. She discussed it with only Ada, and when I wasn't there, so I couldn't have known about it. When I mentioned it, Kathy uh, knew I was listening to their conversations. Also, my home office was suddenly always locked, and I was spending a lot of time in there with the doors closed. I was hiding something. They're certainly curious like cats, aren't they? I asked her what I said to make her think I was recording. She said that she was talked to Ada on a Friday evening about going to the, the game on Saturday. Kathy was, was going to buy tickets and surprise me. Ada said it was supposed to rain all day Saturday. And she was right. I was supposed It was supposed to rain. Kathy and I ended up seeing an early movie we didn't uh, like instead. 
Afterwards, we went to dinner and I had a couple of drinks. A couple of drinks too many. It only rained for a few minutes all day Saturday and didn't affect the game. When we were discussing the movie in the restaurant, I told Kathy she should have gone ahead and bought tickets for the game. We would have enjoyed it more than the movie. Kathy said there was no way I could have known about her buying tickets for the game. She hadn't mentioned anything to me about that. There you go. You were drinking, not paying attention, and it slipped out. That's why you should watch. If you're dealing with people and there's things going on, you shouldn't drink. Otherwise, you slip up. And this chick obviously isn't dumb. I said that it didn't mean I was, it didn't mean I was recording. Ada could have told me. She said this was the, the week after the fiasco with Roger, and I was still ignoring Ada. Also, Ada knew it was it was meant as a surprise. It was more likely that I was recording their conversations than Ada mentioned to me. I knew something I shouldn't have known, and she said she'd be recording if she were in my shoes. Within uh, two days after my installing the equipment, Kathy knew I was recording everything. I let it slide that she didn't tell me that she was seeing her ex, even just to talk. She should have. That doesn't matter now. But it does matter to me that she didn't uh, tell me about Ada's affairs. I said I thought she'd tell me about what she found out about Ada's affairs. She admitted she should have done that with Roger, and she would do so in the future. How come she didn't tell me about what she learned from Ada? Kathy said she didn't tell me about them, or she had Ada tell me about them instead. She figured I was recording, so I'd get Ada to talk about them. Andy, Andy, the Jonah guy, and the cop. That was her telling me without directly betraying Ada. Oh, for God's sakes. Even if that's true, uh, the twisting things around. I knew as much as she did about Ada's past affairs. She didn't hide anything from me. She was just able to do it without being a snitch. Yes, but she was. If this is true, she was deliberately getting Ada to open up about these things, strongly suspecting this guy was recording. So, yes, she is, but just not directly. She knows what she's doing. And this is why you can't be with a chick like Kathy, because she's obviously very, very fucking good at manipulating things and, and being opportunistic, and, and amongst many other things. You had your fun with her, the tall, good-looking, blonde model type. Done. Get her out. Kathy says she thought I, I'd known about his affairs. Cheaters who say they want to reconcile should be totally honest with their spouses. The spouse should know everything before deciding whether or not to take the cheater back. If I was recording and, and she was sure I was, I would hear all Ada's confessions. Ada talked about her affairs because Kathy got her to do so. If Kathy didn't keep prying, Ada would, would not have said anything. She even got Ada drunk to talk about Jonah. I asked her why she did that. And she looked at me for a long time thinking, and that, then here's what she told me. And this is what Kathy confessed. According to Kathy, she says, I hate cheaters. I hate cheaters who lie to their spouses about their cheating. My mother started cheating on my dad as soon as they marry, maybe even before they marry. I love my mother, but hate her for what she did to my dad. It destroyed him. My mother would cheat, lie to my father about it, and then when, my, when the affair ended, she'd confess everything and tell my father she loves him, wants him only, and won't do it again. My father put up with this crap until, he was six, until I was 16. He finally had enough and left her. This is a little over 10 years ago. My mother's been trying to get him back ever since he left, and my father is barely civil to her. Okay, so she saw the effect of cheating in her household and her family, and so she hates cheaters. This is what she is doing. But guess what? She was, regardless, actively involved in this whole big fucking mess. So she's no saint. She says, my father has not, has not had a serious relationship with any woman since he left my mother. Well, who can blame him? He sees women but drops them if they start to want anything more than a casual relationship. He says he doesn't trust women and won't allow himself to get hurt again. I wonder if her dad watches my channel. Without trust, there can be no relationship, and he is all out of trust. Well, again, I don't blame her dad. She says, I love my mother, but I hate her for what she did to my dad. I like I like Ada, but hate her for what she's done to you. If you become interested in someone else, tell, tell the spouse. Let the spouse decide what he or she wants to do, or get out of the marriage. I agree with that part. There's lots of reasons to divorce, but only one reason someone cheats. The cheater's selfishness. It's selfish to cheat, but it's even worse to hide it from your spouse. It's cowardly and selfish. Cheating and lying destroys lies. It destroyed my father's life. Again, this is all what Kathy said to him. Kathy continued that it was obviously, obviously thinking of reconciling. That I was obviously thinking about reconciling with Ada, if not immediately, then someday. If I wanted to take Ada back, that was my choice. But I should make the decision with my eyes open. Kathy told Ada to tell me about her affairs. Ada didn't want to be honest, so Kathy got it, got her to come clean. I couldn't make any informed decisions about what to do about my marriage if I wasn't informed. 
Kathy helped Ada inform me. Kathy looked at me and continued. Besides, Ada gave Kathy drugs, lied to her, and manipulated her. Kathy got Ada drunk and manipulated her. Turn around is fair play. <laughs> I don't think Kathy... Kathy is not dumb. Ada is obviously extremely skilled and manipulative and all that, but Kathy is not dumb. And I think she knew there was more going on than she's letting on. That's just me. He says, crunch time. I told her that I wanted to be on my own for a while, but would give her as much time as she needed to make other arrangements. In other words, time to move out, Kathy. She says she figured that I'd ask her to leave once Ada was gone, and she had no doubt that I'd, ask, I'd tell Ada to leave. She appreciated the time I was giving her to figure out what to do next. Kathy told me she'd miss living with me and moved over, over on the couch to give me a hug. I told her I'd miss her too and wanted to remain friends. She said it wouldn't be possible if she went back if she went back with her ex, but she wasn't sure she, what she wanted to do. She might start to date her ex again and see what happens. Oh, go back to more drama. That's a good idea. Kathy enjoys the drama. Let's be honest here. All women like drama. Now, some will just watch it on these TV shows or hear the stories from their friends. Or others want to be right in the thick of it. And Kathy enjoys being right in the thick of all this. Now, she'll go back to her ex-boyfriend with more drama. This is why you can't be in a relationship with Kathy, and I'm sure you're thinking about it. I told her that Ada got a two-bedroom apartment. Maybe she could move in with her. Oh, yeah, that'd be a great idea. Sarcasm, if you can't understand what I'm saying. She said that was possibly possible possibility, and she talked to Ada tomorrow at work. But she was making pretty good money now and could afford her own place. Since I was allowing her to stay for a little while, she had the time to figure things out. I suggested that Kathy consider moving with Ada because I didn't want to foreclose a possible future with Kathy. Smack! No. No relationship with Kathy. I suggested that Kathy consider moving with Ada because I didn't want to foreclose a possible future with Kathy. Smack! Don't even think about it. Well, okay, you're already thinking about it. No. Bad idea. I didn't want her back with her ex. I wanted, to, her, I wanted to continue to see Kathy, maybe just as friends, maybe something more eventually. I know, at least two smacks. Yeah, I, my arm is sore because I was filming another video earlier, smacking people. No, you do not get involved with Kathy. I told her that I needed someone to con confirm that, that, that Ada and I didn't sleep together once we were legally separated. Would she do that? She asked what was involved, and when I explained, she said, sure. Have my attorney write something up, and I'll sign it after that. It was true. Kathy moved out this morning. Good. Saturday, July 29th. So this is from yesterday, guys. She moved in with Ada. She told me that it would it would probably be temporary, but she thought it was the best to get out of my hair as soon as she could. How the hell... This this is part of a problem with... How the hell did Ada allow her to move in with her? Unless she plans to like poison her breakfast cereal or something. Really? After all that? Come on. It does make sense. But then again, drama, drama, drama. Moving in with Ada was the easiest way to do it. She wanted to concentrate on her career, so she, where she lived, that wasn't that important. Kathy understood that Ada was a very damaged person, but with all her flaws, Kathy was still fond of her. Oh, for God's sake. Frenemies. She felt the same ambivalence toward Ada as she did with her mother. As they teamed up to work with clients, it was a good career for, move for both of them. As she was leaving this morning, Kathy said it was fun while it lasted. These were the craziest months of her life. What a whirlwind. Yeah, and she loved every minute of it. Don't even let her pretend that she didn't enjoy it all. Come on here. I told her, to, I told her me too. We hugged and kissed. She asked if I wanted to get to dinner with her next Saturday. She'd take me to my favorite restaurant. I asked her what time she wanted to pick me up, and uh, she smiled and relieved and asked, how 7 p.m.? Then she was gone. I'm going to miss Kathy not being here with me. Smack, dude. Do not, after all this, set yourself up to get into another situation with someone that is not in any way, shape, or form relationship material, and she's not. I've been telling you this since the beginning. Everybody on the channel has been telling you since the beginning. If you end up with Kathy and things go to hell in a handbasket, you got nobody to blame but yourself, man. I'm telling you that right now. I'm being blunt. That's why I'm here. Do not get involved with Kathy. I wouldn't be seeing Kathy. There's plenty of chicks out there. Frankly, you shouldn't be seeing any women right now for a long time healing yourself. He says, so after 10 years of being with one woman, then two women, Charlie, my dog, and I are on our own. Shout out to Charlie the dog. That's the best for now. In other news, I called Ada's parents the night Ada left. Both got on the phone. 
I told them that I asked Ada to leave and they, we were divorcing. They said Ada had told them but asked why I couldn't see couldn't see my way to trying to sort things out with her. I told them that Ada was admitting to multiple affairs while we were married. She'd never been faithful to me. Her mother gasped and were both quiet. Then Ada's mother said, Unbelievable. She's done nothing but lie to everyone all this time. I don't understand how she turned out this way. Then her mother said, She's better not, better not show up here. I wonder if she was going to slap the shit out of Ada as she promised and I didn't ask. Maybe. I told them it was less than six months to the divorce, and maybe when the divorce was done, we could make a new beginning, but I couldn't think about that right now. They said they understood. Her father said that that time does heal all wounds, and we got off the phone. He says, not this wound. So that's my plan. Promise the chance of reconciliation after the divorce, and hope that Ada doesn't decide to fight our agreement. He says, thank you, thank you for those who suggested this, but there's a problem with this plan. Ada was never faithful to me while we were married. Without the constraint of living with me, Ada's vow to not see other men probably won't last a week. She knows she can't have me and the carousel. She might just choose the carousel. Then I lose the incentive she has to not contest our divorce agreement. It seems to me I have three choices here. Number one, keep Ada living with me until the divorce went through so she'll feel like we're on the path of reconciliation. There's no way I'll do this. Number two, keep in contact with Ada so she'll feel we're recon re reconnecting. I have to see if I can stomach this for see how long. Probably not. Or three, say the hell with it and let Ada do her worst. The settlement I have is the best I'll get. And if Ada challenges the settlement, I'll probably win. That will delay the divorce and get a judge involved. Not good, but I have a couple things I can still do. If Ada wants to screw the divorce, I'll tell her that that proves that she really didn't have any commitment to me or our marriage. I'll tell her again that a divorce based on the, on, uh, the terms we agreed to was the only way we can even attempt to start over. But she might just say, okay, she's happy and not reconciling. She's having too much fun slipping around. Five and a half months is a long time for her to stay interested in reconciling, but maybe she'll still want that. If not, I have a backup plan, my guilty conscience. I've already isolated Ada's video confessions about her affair with Andy. I've also compiled a video of Ada confessing all to, of her affairs. If things get only in divorce, I'll tell Ada that I feel guilty about not telling Andy's wife and Andy about infidelity. I also think Andy's Ada's HR department and Andy's boss should know about the unprofessional behavior of their employees, Andy and Ada. There you go. Always have backup, backup plans. Always have a ace in your pocket. <clears throat> I'll tell Ada I've been held I'm been, I'll tell Ada I've held off on sending them and the recording I have of her confession about Andy because I didn't want to ruin things for her I know that Ada loves her job and if when we get back together I want Ada to be happy my desire for Ada to be happy if we get back together outweighs the guilt I feel he doesn't mean he's going to get back with her but this is what he's communicating to her to get her to go along with his shit but if Ada refuses to go along with the divorce settlement as is, I'll tell her it shows she doesn't not, does not love me, and there will be no reconciliation. At that point, my guilt will just overwhelm me, blah, blah, blah. I'll have to send the recording about her and Andy to her work. There's also a compilation of her talking about her affairs. Her parents would want to see that. This isn't blackmail. It's my guilty conscience and strong ethical code forcing me to expose cheaters. However, you, however way you want to spin it, that works for me. Both the carrot and the stick to get Ada to keep our present settlement. My guess is that regardless of what Ada does, Andy's boss, HR department, and his wife will receive the videos right after the divorce is final. I think Ada's parents should also see the videos the minute the divorce is final. Well, there you go, ma'am. Do what you got to do to get her over the next six months or whatever to play ball, greet the divorce, and once that's over, then knock yourself out sending all those videos to her former lovers and the lovers' wives and her parents and all that, knock yourself out. And then you can truly move on. But for God's sakes, you don't get back with Ada, which I'm pretty sure you're not going to do because you know that a lot of the dudes in this community would track you down. A whole bunch of guys just stand around smacking you. And back to Kathy. It needs to be said, again, do not get involved with Kathy. Uh, honestly, you shouldn't be friends with her. You can't be friends with a chick that you've been banging all this time. It's not a real friendship here. But Kathy, she loves drama. Enjoyed every minute being in the middle of it. Now she's moving back in with Ada. More drama. Go back with her ex. More drama. No. It's a terrible idea, okay? I get she's hot. I get she helped you get through this shit in, in the fucked up way that it was. 
It's done. It's over. You shouldn't even be friends with her anymore. If it was me, I would say, you know what? Given the circumstances, I got to move on. I really wish you the best. Say what you got to say. So she doesn't go psycho on you and cut her out of your life and move on. That's the way I'd handle it, as with all the guys here. So gentlemen in the comment section, please let this guy know what you think about Kathy and how he should handle it. We don't want this guy hurt again. But if you get involved with Kathy and bullshit happens down the road, and I guarantee you bullshit will happen down the road, and you get your heart broken and all that, you got no one to blame but yourself. It has to be said. You must understand. I'm not saying this to be a dick. I'm saying this to help you. And I'm sure all the guys here watching believe me. But anyway, bro, this has been one hell of a story. And I'm sorry you went through all this shit. I really am. It's 10 years. You know, but you handle it like a boss in the end and you're planning. And that's, and I hope you really have changed and learned a lot of things from this whole ordeal. And things you've learned from the channel. And just I want you to focus on yourself. Take, taking things day by day, exercise, work out. I know, you, I know you said you do that. Spending time with people that care about you and work on your career, and you're going to be fine. But don't go, no relationships. And again, I would cut Kathy out. But what you do, it's your business. You're a grown ass man. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let this guy know what you think about this. Give him a shout out for his sharing this very long eight part story. And by the way, brother, if you have an update, let's hear from you down the road. When the divorce is final and where things are. I'd love to hear from you in six months to see if the divorce goes through. I really want to hear that. And guys, let this guy know if you want to hear more when the divorce is actually final in six months. we really like to hear be part nine and probably part ten of this. It's like fucking Star Wars here with all these episodes here. Ever sure like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.